Welcome to this third video where we're making billiards. I don't know what billiards is or snooker or pool in JavaScript using the P5 library. What have we got so far? We've got, where's my code? This is just, sorry, this isn't real. <laughs> this is just a drawing or a, a scientific diagram of what we're aiming for. Although we've changed our balls to, to kind of a space gray. That may have been an accident. So let's just run what we've got so far. It should still be working. I haven't changed anything. So we've got a ball moving using some physics, but there we haven't got our collision detection. So this is what we're going to do in this video. Now, there are different ways of doing this. I would like to write in our class, in our edge class, which is the parent or the superior class, which the ball class or subclass extends. I'd like to write a static function which means um, it would be kind of independent of any instantiated object, but it would be kind of a, a useful a useful function that both balls and edges or any other object that extends the edge class could use, which deals with collision detection. Um, then the edge class and all of its baby classes, all of that would be self-contained and organized. But we've got different shapes of objects going on. So the way two balls might hit one another is going to be different to how we kind of do the collision detection and make our measurements from an edge. There is a way we could generalize over it, um, but I'm not sure. But then the method I'm thinking, we need to also know when the ball hits this edge as opposed to say, a left-hand edge or an underneath edge because the way it's going to rebound is going to be different. So let's, I've got something in mind. Let's try it now. So in our edge class, so I think our edge class is going to have a function called check call. Um, oh, actually, we can say check hit. So what this function is going to do is going to check to see whether a ball, um, which we'll just call underscore b, um, it's going to check whether that ball has hit it. I need to know what the time is. Okay. Um, and if there is a hit, it's going to return true or false. So we'll assume it's going to be false. And then basically we're going to say if some maths and logic return true, otherwise false. So we'll come back to you. Um, and where are we going to check for this? So in, we've got to check in the draw loop. Maybe, oh yeah, we've got to check every ball. So for each ball, we've got to check it against the edges. Now, we see another advantage of using arrays. If we'd used arrays for our edges, we wouldn't have to do things four times, but well, we've hard coded it, so we'll stay. So basically we're gonna say something like top edge. Um, I want to check hit and then what ball, it's the current ball that we are um, we are referring to in our for loop. So now, if we put this in the for loop, it's going to check every ball that we create against the top edge to see if it's hit or not. Um, top edge, check hit. OK, but remember, check hit returns true or false. So we want to say something like let, um, let rebound equal the result of that check hit function. Okay. And then we can say, then we can say, if rebound is true, then do this. So if we're talking about the top edge, then we want, let's have a look at our diagram, then if it hits the top edge, its velocity in that direction, in the in the y direction, wants to be precisely reversed. In real life, it would be, it wouldn't be exactly its um, 
this current y velocity it would be slightly less because the edge would absorb some of the energy, uh, kinetic energy and so forth. So, but we're going to say it's more perfect. We could fiddle around with that later, it'd be fun. But the x stays the same, look. The x direction is moving towards the right, it'll hit the top, sorry, I'm starting here. It'll move towards the right, hit the top, and then carry on moving towards the right. It's only y that changes. It's exactly the same for the bottom, actually. <gasps> so top edge and bot bottom edge, we can kind of buy one, code one, get one for free, but the left and right edges are going to be different to that. So if it's moving left, um, its x is going to be reversed, but the y now stays the same. We could do something like saying, first check if the edge is greater this length and that length, then, then decide to do something different with x and y. Anyway, we'll stick to what we were doing. So we're going to say, let rebound equal top edge check hit. So it's going to go into check hit. If they overlap, return true. Else they're not overlapping, we'll return false. So if it's false, it won't do any of this. It'll just draw the ball and move it. There's no rebounding happening. But if it's true, it's going to do what we're going to write now. So we're checking the top edge. Um, and we're going to say, um, so it's the x is going to be the same, but that ball, its uh, y is going to be reversed. Its ball, so it's not its position, sorry. Its velocity and the y component of the velocity equals, um, sorry, the reverse. So we'll just put a minus sign in front of all of that. So if it were 10, it's going to be minus 10. And if it's minus 10, it's going to be 10. So we just reverse it. OK. So that's done. And we don't need to change the x, remember. So we've got that rebound working. We haven't done the difficult bit. We haven't done the, the logic here. So we want to say, oh, we don't want to open up that. We want to say, where's my diagram? If this ball is doing that basically, or if it's at least here. Okay, so we want, maybe we want to measure the distance between them, and if that distance is less than this radius plus this radius, so at the moment the distance is greater than this radius plus this radius, if it's here, now, the distance from the centre of the ball to its edge plus the centre of the edge to its edge, its surface, it's now equal, so they must be hitting. So let's put that in code. If you haven't followed that, maybe this will make it clear. So we're going to say if... Um, so we're inside, where are we? We're inside the edge, and we, we're being passed in a ball object. So we're saying... If this, um, oh, we need to work out, first of all, we need the distance. So we call that dist let distance equal. And to get a distance, we just need to get the magnitude of one vector position minus the other. It doesn't matter which one we substitute from the other. So we're going to say this, um, do I need to use p5 vector sub? Yes, this distance equals p5 vector sub. So that's how to substitute one vector from another. And we want to substitute, let's just say, um, ball position. So that's the whole vector, not just x and y. It's both of them together as a vector from the edges position. There we go. So this now is going to be a vector. This sometimes goes wrong. I'm going to make it into a vector first <laughs> and then say dist do we equal that. I never trust JavaScript to do that. OK. So dist is a vector and it is precisely the vector between, it's like a line between wherever that ball is, its position, and this position. So it's like drawing an invisible line. In fact, can I make that line visible? 
that. It's kind of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I've drawn a, an accidental line. It's kind of that. But with a vector, it's it's all it's giving us is a direction of it. We need the the length of this vector, which is its magnitude. So I think we can just say uh, dist equals itself, but just its magnitude. So I think. Oh no! I that will just return a number. In fact, let's just say uh, let the dist the dist equal distance magnitude. I guess I could pass in the magnitude down here. Anyway, I'm not doing very well on time here. Only five minutes. So if this, so if the distance the dist, if the distance is greater than, so on the radius of the ball. So this no. Where's the ball? That's underscore b. Rad. So we've already calculated that. Oh, we haven't calculated the radius of our edge. So we kind of needed that now. Um, but we'll calculate it here. So plus... Um, ah. It's the height. It's the height. So it's this hid divided by 2. OK. So... If that distance is greater than that, they're not overlapping. <laughs> if the distance between them is less than their radii added together, they must be overlapping. I've just spotted a, a problem here. Possibly. Let's just see if it works, first of all. And let's do the bottom edge. So we're back into our main um, file and we're in the draw loop and we're in the, the for loop that iterates over all of the balls and we've just checked um, whether we're hitting the top edge. So we want to do that the exact same here. Can I use let again? Will that um, let, no I don't need that now, let bottom edge and it needs to do exactly the same I believe. Okay, let's just see if we can hit the top and bottom edges. Oh it's so slow, it's so exciting. Right, do you bounce up? <laughs> no! <laughs> What is going on? Okay, rebound equals bottom edge check hit balls. If rebound equals true, we are just changing the y velocity. Velocity equals minus velocity. Okay, I think this is okay. So where the problem will oh I don't think this is don't think that's the problem. Just double check this. So there is a difference in JavaScript between double equals and equals. Um, double equals means that JavaScript if there's any problems between the, the type of variable that you're looking at, it will correct that for you. So triple equals is kind of like faster and if you know that you know that that's a Boolean and and you're talking about booleans, so true or false, then it's you're okay if you kind of controlled what type of variable you've got. Hmm. Okay, right. So the problem is where it where we we'd anticipate it to be is in here. Check hit B. Oh, <laughs> we didn't return true. I'm still too hopeful. Probably won't work. So, else return false. Sorry, so we checked whether the distance was less than uh, the two radii added together, but we didn't return true. <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> good luck, little ball, or good luck, edge.
Oh no! <laughs> it still hasn't worked. Oh, that's so disappointing. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's faster this one. Damn, it's not working. Not working. Um, I've run out of time. I've failed completely. If this distance magnitude is less than is that right? B rad equals this diameter divided by two plus this head. So that's referring to the the edges um, height. Oh, wait a minute. This won't work at all. This is this would only work for two objects that are circles. Yeah, because <laughs> quite obviously, um if we're say if our ball is over here like that. Notice the magnitude is huge. So what we really want to check is this Ah, we can just say the magnitude between um, an, a, a position that is perpendicular to our object, to our ledge, our edge, sorry, not ledge. So we want to say the, the y component of the, of the um, vector for the edge is going to remain the same, but we want to change its um, its exposition to the ball's exposition. So we want to create a new vector. So let um, we'll call it new v equals create vector, and then we want to take the exposition is the ball's position. Yeah, the ball. Oh, yes, yes, this is fine. I think this ball's position x and this position uh, y and then um, instead of this position we want the new vector. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just over time. I haven't got a coffee. The ball moves really slow. No, it's quite fast. <gasps> It worked. Oh, there's no better feeling. Okay, <laughs> so let's do one thing to make this look okay. We're going to make lots of balls now. So we can say, um, where's my ball loop? Let's have 10 and then play it again. So they're all going to be, they're all going to be created at the center of the, the snooker table if, if things work and they should be able to hit the top and the bottom ledge, but they all have different vectors, velocities. Here we go. Um, if they work. Oh, lovely. So our balls are now doing exactly what we, we anticipated. Right. See you in video three, where we'll be able to hit the balls and get some pockets. <laughs> I thought I'd try. We probably won't be able to do those two things. Okay, thank you for watching.